Yes, now you can start. Good morning, all. Uh, happy to meet you all. Um, I praise God for giving this uh, opportunity uh, to listen the word of God and meditate on the word of God, the gospel. Jesus is the Christ. And uh, we are happy to welcome Pastor Moore uh, and all today. And uh, we ask uh, Sister Nusra to do the opening prayer. We shall start the program. <clears throat> um, peace and grace and Holy Spirit be with us, with you and with us all. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this wonderful opportunity that you've given it to us once again. So we gather here, we can glorify and worship your name. We praise your name, glorify your name, Lord. So we can hear your word today, Lord. Thank you for each one of us, Lord, that we continue as the Father, that you come and be present here, Lord, to take a charge of your church, Lord, Jesus Christ, that you are the head of this church and we are your body here, Lord. Your body is gathered here, Lord. We are asking, Father, that pour your spirit onto us, breathe onto us, Lord, and continue to give us, open our mind, brain, and heart, and our uh, wisdom, give us a wisdom and knowledge and discernment so we can know about what is you about to speak to us today so we can apply it to our life, Lord. And once again, Father, all the worship and uh, praise uh, will be in all our petitions and everything, all the service will be accepted in the throne of grace in the powerful name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister. And uh, we will have a praise and worship session. Uh, and uh, I request uh, Princey to sing a song. Jai Masiki. Jai Masiki. Asraya u nile saya nan adara u nile saya asraya u nile saya nan adara u nile saya ninninda dada kaya u vantu illa ninninda
ಶಾಶ್ವತ ಸ್ಥಾನ ದಿನಾನ ನೀನೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿಸುವೆ ಶಾಶ್ವತ ಸ್ಥಾನ ದಿನ ನಾನು ನೀನೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿಸುವೆ ಆರಾಧನೆ 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 ಆಮೇಲೆ ಮರ್ನಾಕ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ ರಾಮ್ ಬಾಬು ಉಮ್ಮೈ ನಮ್ಮಿ ಒಂದೇ ನಾವಿಕ್ಕ ಪಾಡಲ್ಲ ಉಂದಯವೆನ್ನೈ ಕೈ ವೇಟಲ ಉಮ್ಮೈ ನಮ್ಮಿ ಒಂದೇ ಉಂದಯವೆನ್ನೈ ಕೈ ವೇಡಲ್ಲ ವೇರು ಕೈಯಾಯ ಕಡಂದು ಬಂದೀರ್ ಈರು ಪರಿವಾರಿಂಗಳ ತಂದಿ ವೇರು ಕೈಯಾಯ ಕಡು ಬಂದೀರ್ ಈ ಪರಿವಾರಿಂಗಳ ನಂಕು ತಂದೀರ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೇಲ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೇಲ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಮೈ ಕುದಿಪ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೇಲ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೇಲ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಮೈ ತುದಿಪ ಉಮ್ಮೈ ನಮ್ಮಿ ಒಂದೇ ನಾವಿಕ್ಕ ಪಾಡಲ್ಲ ಉಂದಯವೆನ್ನೈ ಕೈ ವೀಡಲ್ಲ ಉಮ್ಮೈ ನಮ್ಮಿ ಒಂದೇ ನಾವಿಕ್ಕ ಪಾಡಲ್ಲ ಉಂದಯವೆನ್ನೈ ಕೈ ವೀಡಲ್ಲ ಕಾಯು ಪಟ್ಟು ನಿಂದ್ರೈ ಕಣ್ಣೀರಲ್ ಚಿಂದ್ರೈ ಕಾಲಂಗಿ ನಾಯನ ಕಾಂಗ ಇರಂಗಿ ಬಂದೇ ಕಾಯು ಪಟ್ಟು ನಿಂದ್ರೈ ಕಣ್ಣೀರಲ್ ಚಿಂದ್ರೈ ಕಾಲಂಗಿ ನಾಯನ ಕಾಂಗ ಇರಂಗಿ ಬಂದೇ ಊಡಂಬಾಡಿ ಕೈ ಎನ್ನೋಡ ಸೈದು ಇಲ್ಲಂದಿಟ್ಟ ಯಾವ ಎಂ ತಿರುಂಬ ತಂದೀರ್ ಊಡಂಬಾಡಿ ಕೈ ಎನ್ನೋಡ ಸೈದು ಇಲ್ಲಂದಿಟ್ಟ ಯಾವ ಎಂ ತಿರುಂಬ ತಂದೀರ್ ಹೇಳ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೀ ಹೇಳ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೀ ಹೇಳ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೀ ಉಮ್ಮೈ ತುದಿಪ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೀ ಹೇಳ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೀ ಹೇಳ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೀ ಉಮ್ಮೈ ತುದಿಪ ಉಮ್ಮೈ ನಮ್ಮಿ ಒಂದೇ ನಾವೆಕ್ಕ ಪಾಡಲ್ಲ ಉಂದಯವೆನ್ನೈ ಕೈ ವೀಡಲ್ಲ ಉಮ್ಮೈ ನಮ್ಮಿ ಒಂದೇ ನಾವೆಕ್ಕ ಪಾಡಲ್ಲ ಉಂದಯವೆನ್ನೈ ಕೈ ವೀಡಲ್ಲ ವೇಂಡಿರೋರೆಲ್ಲಾಮ್ ವೀಡೈ ಪೆಟ್ಟು ಪೋದುಂ ವೇಂಡಿಯದೆಲ್ಲಾಮ್ ಏನಂತು ತಂದು ವೇಂಡಿರೋರೆಲ್ಲಾಮ್ ವೀಡೈ ಪೆಟ್ಟು ಪೋದುಂ ವೇಂಡಿರೋದೆಲ್ಲಾಮ್ ಏನಂತು ತಂದೆ ಆಜ್ಞೆಯನ್ನು ನನ್ನೊಂದಿಗೆ ಮಾಡಿ ಕಳೆದಿರುವ ಎಲ್ಲವನ್ನು ನೀಡಿರುವೆ ಪರದೇಶಿಯಾಗಿ ನನ್ನ ಸುಖ ಜೀವವನ್ನು ನನಗೆ ನೀಡಿರುವೆ ಹೇಳ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೀ ಹೇಳ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೀ ಹೇಳ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೀ ಉಮ್ಮೈ ತುದಿಪ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೀ ಹೇಳ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೀ ಹೇಳ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೀ ಉಮ್ಮೈ ತುದಿಪ ಉಮ್ಮೈ ನಮ್ಮಿ ಒಂದೇ ನಾವಿಕ್ಕ ಪಾಡಲ್ಲ ಉಂದಯವೆನ್ನೈ ಕೈ ವೇಡಲ್ಲ ಉಮ್ಮೈ ನಮ್ಮಿ ಒಂದೇ ನಾವಿಕ್ಕ ಪಾಡಲ್ಲ ಉಂದಯವೆನ್ನೈ ಕೈ ವೇಡಲ್ಲ ವೇರು ಕೈಯಾಯ ಕರಂದು ಬಂದೀರ್ ಇರು ಪರಿವಾರಂಗಳ ನಂಕು ತಂದೀರ್ ವೇರು ಕೈಯಾಯ ಕರಂದು ಬಂದೀರ್ ಇರು ಪರಿವಾರಿಂಗ ನಂಕು ತಂದೀರ್ ಹೇಳ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೀ ಹೇಳ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೀ ಹೇಳ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೀ ಉಮ್ಮೈ ತುದಿಪ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೀ ಹೇಳ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೀ ಹೇಳ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೀ ಉಮ್ಮೈ ತುದಿಪ ಆಮೇನ್ 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 ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಆಮೇನ್ ಪ್ರಸಾದ್ Especially start with the prayer. Uh, there's, uh, the, there's a brother Rashid, uh, is John here. I think his daughter Unika likes to worship. Can we ask her to worship? And then we can start uh, 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 today's message. Okay. Okay. 
can you call them for worship? Um, ji, ab hum bhai Rashid hain, humare saath unki beti hain, wo worship karna chahti hain. To hum unko dawa dete hain ki wo worship kare, aur uske baad bhai Nazir Alam hain, humare saath wo kalam ke liye, aaj ke kalam ke liye dua karenge. Or uh, um, sister, um, Yonika, Yonika beti, aap worship kare. I am उसके जलाल में आगे बढ़ते हुए उसके नाम की जमदीद करते हुए प्रतिष्ठ करेंगे और उसके नाम को इज्जत और जलाल देंगे रूहे पाक चटाना नु हिला देदाए दरे आवाद रुक पर ता देदाए रूहे पाक चटाना नु हिला देदाए दरे आवाद रुक पर ता देदाए Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Sister, who is going to? Brother Ashraf? 
unmute please पास्टर नजीर आलम वो हमारे साथ हैं तो वो दुआ में हमारी रहनमई करेंगे आज के कलाम के लिए आज के मैसेज के लिए और ब्रदर मूव के लिए कि वो जो है वो आज का मैसेज है वो हम दुआ करेंगे जी जी अपनी आंखों को बंद करेंगे हम सब झुकाएंगे मुकदस कलाम के लिए दुआ करेंगे जिंदा आसमान के खुदा हम आपको शुक्रगुजारी करते हैं आपकी मेहरबानियों बधाइयों जंगाइयों आपकी वफादारियों के लिए शुक्रगुजारी करते हैं मेरा बहुत खुदा अजीम तो अजीम और बला और चंगा खुदा है तो बनी नौ इंसान के लिए अच्छे मनसूबे रखता है हम शुक्रगुजारी करते हैं खुदा है मेरे पास गो के खुदा तो बुलंदियों पर आए तो भी मेरे पास बनी नौ इंसान पर खुदा ये तमाम लोगों पर तेरी आंखें सैर करती रहती हैं तमाम लोगों पर खुदा तू नागा करता रहता है तमाम लोगों के लिए खुदा तू अच्छे मनसूबे रखता है और ये मेरे पाख यस्सु के नाम है मैं आपकी शुक्रगुजारी करता हूँ और मकदस कलाम की शुक्रगुजारी करता हूँ आपका कलाम मेरे पास जो कि दो हजार से ज्यादा तेज आए जो कि बंद बंद और गुदे गुदे में से होकर गुजर जाता है जो कि इंसान के दिल के और अरादों को ख्यालों को जाँचता और परखता है जो कलाम इंसान के लिए बेहतरी भलाई के लिए होता है जो इंसान की तरक्की के लिए होता है जो इंसान की सरफराजी के लिए होता है जो राह और हक बताने के लिए होता है जो शिफा और निजात के लिए होता है जो अंधों की आंखें खोलता है लंगड़ों को चलाता है मुर्दों को जिंदा करता है बदरुओं को दूर करता है हम तेरे कलाम की शुक्रगुजारी करते हैं अहमराबाद तो कि तू अजीम से अजीम तरफ खुदा है अहमराबाद तो तू गो के आसमान की बुलंदियों पर रहता है तो भी खुदा तो बनी नौ इंसान पर अहमराबाद ख्याल करता है रहम करता है तर्स करता है क्योंकि तू रहम और तर्स भरा खुदा है हम तेरी शुरू गुजारी करते हैं खुदा हाँ हम तेरी बड़ी हम तेरी बड़ी कुदरत के लिए हम तेरी शुरू गुजारी करते हैं यीशु के नाम में अहमर पाउदा तेरे खाद में पास जो कि अहमर पाउदा इस वक्त मैसेज देने को है अहमर पाउ जो कि तेरी आवाज लोगों तक पहुंचाने को है मैं उस शुरू गुजारी करता हूँ तेरे खाद में पर खुदा आपके बेटे यस्सु के लाओ जो कि ताजा और गर्म है हर वक्त उसमें सर से लेकर पैर के तलवार तक उसमें छिपा देते हैं के जो है मेरे बाप जब वो कलाम करे तो आज के कलाम के विजला से मेरे बाप दा जो जो कलाम है मेरे बाप सुने तो मेरे बाप दा उसके बंधन दुए रिहाई चंग्याई पाए शफा का काम हो और सरफराजी का काम हो और निजात का काम हो अपने खादमों को कीजिए और बड़ी बरकत देकर कसरत से अपने जलाल के लिए समर कीजिए और मकद इस मामले कर मांगते हैं आमीन 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 ओके ब्रदर रवि आप पास्ट मूव उनको आप आप उनको इनवाइट कर सकते हैं अब आप और उनका इंट्रोडक्शन भी आप थोड़ा करवा दें थैंक यू ऑल हियर वी हैव पास्ट मूव विथ अस is a wonderful man of god from his voice i first uh, uh, heard the gospel that jesus is the christ from the youtube lectures uh, it was wonderful it changed my life a lot and uh, all the world uh, through his voice uh, the gospel is returned uh, pastor cho has given pastor mo to deliver a special message for the people completed uh, two lectures so we will listen what god is, is going to talk from his uh, from him to uh, through uh, to us thank you i i welcome pastor mu please the clap we can welcome pastor mu uh, all participants come up participants down the stage praise hallelujah 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 khudaavan ki tareef hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord jesus christ Amen. So it is a pleasure uh, to be with you all. Um, by the way, do we need any interpretation for today, or is it okay to just speaking in, in English? No, you can you can carry on. Okay, very well. Thank you so much. Uh, it is a pleasure, and um, it's an honor to meet many of you for the first time. Um, but I believe that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. 
because we have all believed the gospel. Uh, we have all listened to the gospel that um, the Bible elucidates to us is the gospel that Jesus is the Christ. Now, um, I would like to uh, share with you a brief passage um, as we begin this time. It is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let us look at verse 1 uh, to 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 to 6. It says, Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ, as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made this light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Amen. Let us briefly pray. Amen. Father God, we thank you for you have allowed us to share this time in order to share your word to um clarify to us what your gospel is. Lord, we ask you to help us with the Holy Spirit that you may reveal the gospel to us, not only in words, not only in knowledge, but in the depths of our hearts and our spirits, allow us to have the revelation of the gospel that Jesus is the Christ. And that with that, we may be able to save the world through the proclamation of the gospel. Not only that, allow us to go deeper into the gospel every day that we may enjoy Emmanuel and that we may live a life that is pleasing to you. We thank you and we pray in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. So um, as uh, this word is, uh, I think this word is very important to the life of every Christian because I think it sets a very important pathway that we should follow. I understand that uh, during the last few weeks, um, participants in this meeting have been able to listen to the 12 lectures, which are not the Bible itself. They are um, just a way to elucidate the gospel. So just as a refresher, um, in the 12 lectures, we discuss how there is a problem in the church today. Um, our aim is not to criticize or to point out deficiencies but rather to really fulfill the goal. As we understand the church has been left here in this earth for one purpose. We are still uh, militant in this earth for one purpose, which is to fulfill world evangelization. When we are with God in heaven, we'll be able to pray. We will be able to praise. We will be able to get to know him deeper and enjoy his presence. Many things that we do here in this earth we will be able to do there as well. But there is one thing we will not be able to do uh, when we are with our Lord fully, and we will not be able to evangelize. That's because uh, there will be no people to evangelize there. But however, today we have the chance to evangelize, to share the gospel. Now, even though we have this opportunity and the Lord has sent the church to make disciples of all nations and to be witnesses in Jerusalem, all of Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth, there is a disturbing truth in the church today. And this truth is that although there have been many efforts to do a world evangelization, to fulfill the great commission, um, the sad truth is that many churches are unable to participate in their lives with this work. Many churches today are paralyzed in doing world evangelization. And when we ask why, we can only turn back to one thing. The problem is not about administration. The problem is not about knowledge. The problem is not about more effort. The problem is what gospel are we believing in? 
And throughout the lectures, we saw how all the early church had just one message. And not only the early church, but the whole Bible had one message. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. It was always Jesus is the Christ. Paul, Peter, Apollos, everyone shared that Jesus is the Christ. Why? They were all so very intelligent. Peter had many experiences with Jesus. He could have spoken about so many things. Paul was very well learned in the scriptures, as was Apollos. So why did they only proclaim that Jesus is the Christ? What was, why was that the crux or the core of their message? That's because there's one problem with mankind, and only the gospel can solve this problem. We must know what the problem is in order to know the weight or the severity of the solution, so to speak. So we understand that man only has one problem. It's not that the problem is money or health or family. Rather, the problem of man is just one thing. Man was created in order to be with God, but man today does not know God. And although there are many religions in this planet, and although there are many people who have had spiritual experiences, uh, that is not the same as knowing God, as being with God. People today hide from God, just as Adam hid from God once he was found guilty of breaking the covenant. That is what many people do today. We hide in the most unlikely of ways. Sometimes we hide by saying, oh, I already have faith. No, I already know about the Bible. Uh, I already pray. I'm already a pastor. I know God. So many people hide like this. And that's the problem. We don't want to be with God. We are separate from God. Why are we separate from God? It is because of sin. As we know, sin is such a severe problem that it, that it can distance us from God. And I always wondered, why is it that sin separates us from God? We know that sinners cannot be with God, or else the righteousness of God would completely destroy us. We know that for a fact. And we know that God has put some distance between us and God so that that does not happen. But also, man is ashamed of his sin. Deep down, we know that we are not righteous. We know that even if we have lived a very good life, that is not necessarily the righteousness of God. We understand that God has given us a covenant. Don't, uh, in the beginning for Adam and Eve, it was don't eat the fruit or of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The day you eat of it, you'll surely die. So in the beginning, it was that covenant. And man does not believe that covenant. Man does not obey that covenant. Even today, when God gives us his word, what we would rather do is to obey our own thoughts, our own feelings, rather than the word of God. So that is sin. Sin is not just killing. It's not just uh, stealing. It's not just um, practicing bad things. All of those are sin, yes. But fundamentally, sin is not obeying nor believing the word of God. And this is a sin we're all guilty of. We cannot escape sin by our strength. What then causes us to sin? Why do we sin? It's because there is someone who is leading us towards sin. That is Satan. In the lectures, we saw how Satan was a very precious being from the beginning, an angel created originally for the glory of God, but he thought in his heart that he could be like God, so he fell. He was cast down to earth, where he still does his work. And what is his work? To, it is to kill, steal, and destroy. He does that with mankind in a very subtle, in a very powerful way. What he does is that he makes all things attractive, but not the word of God. So people today are looking for so many things. People today are looking for a way to be happy because everyone wants to be happy. No one wants to be sad, right? But everyone wants to seek out happiness in a different way. Some people want a good education and they believe that will make them happy. Some people want a good family and they believe that will make them happy. Some people want to be influential and to help other people. And they think that will make them happy. They're all very good things, but they're not God. 
They're not what we truly need. So Satan leads mankind toward that. So the problem of man can be encapsulated. It can be summarized in these. We're separate from God because of sin and because of Satan. And this is the first thing that we must believe. Because often in churches, we have not believed this. Let's go to a verse. Uh, let us look at Haggai chapter 1, please. Haggai chapter 1, verse 5 to 9. Haggai chapter 1, verse 5 to 9 says, Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but you have harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You um, earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build the house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why? declares the Lord Almighty, because my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with its own house. So here in Haggai, we see the state of man. Uh, not only do we see the state of Israel at this time, but I think it's also very reflective of the truth of man's life. Uh, what this means is that man always wants to eat, and man gets food, but food doesn't fill him. Man thinks that he will be happy by being warm with his clothes, but clothing is not what really will warm him. Man thinks that by getting so many things, he will be happy, but that never fills him up. You know why? This is because in the end, what man needs is not just physical things. Even if man has physical things, like this passage in Haggai, um, God has allowed them to have many things, but that does not really fill them. And when God is being ignored. And when God is not being the center of our lives, what God does, he, he speaks to us through so many things in life. But even then, the Israelites did not listen. In this case, in Haggai, God was trying to call the Israelites' attention by telling them, you know what, you're not being satisfied because my house is not being rebuilt. In this time, um, at this time, uh, the house of God was not built yet. But people were focusing on their own needs. People were focusing on the things that they, they thought that they needed solving before attending to what God really wanted. And today in church, it may be the same. Today in church, we see people who have so many problems and we attend those problems. We say, oh, brother, let's pray so that you get a job. Oh, sister, let's pray so that your marriage is better. Oh, let's pray for your children. Let's do this. Let's do that. Those are good things, but that is not the true problem. The true problem is that man needs to meet God. Man needs to have a solution to sin. And man needs a solution for Satan who is attacking his life. So even if all the physical problems are solved, there remains one problem. Um, a brother here in Mexico, um, he said something that stuck with me. Uh, he said, all the problems that that people see in life, the problems of money, problems with family, problems with the health, they, they, they all can end when you die. When you die, none of that remains. But there is one problem that keeps on persisting after death. And that is a problem you have of facing God without having an answer. There is a day of judgment after we die. What will we do in that judgment? There is an eternity that is at risk. So man is filled with problems, but the true problem comes from being separate from God. Now, man cannot meet God by his own strength. And that is why God promised the Messiah throughout all the Bible, all the Old Testament has one um, core theme along all of its narrative. And it is the Messiah will come. And when the Messiah comes, he will solve the problem absolutely. As you know very well, Messiah and Christ are the same word, once in Hebrew, once in Greek. But they all both mean the same thing. In our language, or in English in this case, it means the anointed one. 
So why the anointed one? We know that in the Old Testament, three types of people were anointed specially. The priests, kings, and prophets were anointed. Priests were supposed to, were supposed to solve the problem of sin by sacrificing animals. But that sacrifice was never enough. It only lasted until the next time you sin. And, and, and people never stopped sinning. So it was a constant way of sacrificing animals, but people were never fully clean. What God was saying is, these priests will not solve your sin. However, there will come a true priest who will resolve your sin. He is the Messiah. Wait for him. The Messiah will solve your sin. Kings. Kings were raised up to defeat the enemy and protect their people. But as you know very well, kings were not perfect. Even the best king, David, he was not perfect. So God was saying, these kings, they may defeat the enemy that you think you have, the physical enemy, but they are never able to defeat the true enemy that is Satan. Only the Messiah, only the true king will be able to defeat Satan. Then the prophets. Prophets were people who were a type of people, sorry, who listened to the voice of God. They heard a message from God and they delivered it to the people so that God and the people could be reunited. But there was one problem. Even though prophets constantly spoke the word of God, the hearts of people would, would not turn to God. So God was saying, these prophets won't do the job. However, the true prophet will come. And that true prophet, the Messiah, the anointed one, he will reconcile you with God in a perfect way. And that was a promise of the Messiah, the Christ. And as you know, there are more than 300 prophecies. God is so interested that we should meet the Christ, that he gives us more than 300 prophecies. And as you know, they're all fulfilled in one man, Jesus. Jesus came to this earth to do much more than heal people, much more than comfort people, much more than just be a voice of righteousness. He came to do the work of the Messiah. He came to be the Christ and to fulfill the work that would resolve our problem. Because on that cross, he completely destroyed the power of Satan over us. He completely destroyed the power of sin that accuses us. And he completely opened a new way for us to meet God. That is why we call him the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the only one who can solve the problem that man has. But the problem is that we as a church, and I speak globally, I speak about all the world, people have not believed this. Why do I say this? It's because a lot of people say, yes, I believe in Jesus. But when they're faced with Satan, they don't go to Jesus. They go to their own practices. They go to prayer. They go to reading the Bible more. They go to all things. They're good. Of course, I'm not saying praying is bad. What I'm saying is people don't believe in Jesus as the ultimate solution. When people are confronted with their daily problems as well, they don't rely on Jesus. They don't go to Jesus because they don't believe in him as the Christ. So this is the most urgent message. This is urgent for India. I know that people in India, um, there are many people who want to believe, people who are ready to believe, but this message is not being delivered to them. In Canada, in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, in so many countries, people think that they know the Christ. And they, of course, they know a few elements, but knowing is not the same as believing. So I encourage you, brothers and sisters, please be mindful of this. Do not think that knowing that Jesus is a Christ is the same as believing and living out the fact that Jesus is a Christ. We may know, but not believe. And that is the greatest trap that we can fall into. Believing that Jesus is a Christ means that I believe that because Jesus has done everything through the cross and resurrection, now I can be with God. And being with God is greater than everything. Being with God is greater than physical problems. Being with God is greater than tests of faith. Being with God is greater than the situation. Being with God is greater than everything else that is going around. And that is what we must believe. Because Jesus is a Christ, now Emmanuel can be restored to my life. And because Emmanuel is restored to my life first, 
I no longer worry or let's uh, explain it a little bit better. Uh, I no longer become consumed by the problems of my life. So many people are like this in church. So many people say, God, I will serve you if you solve my problem. But then God has mercy on these people and God solves their problem, right? If you had a debt, maybe you get out of that debt. If you had a marriage problem, then maybe your marriage get better, uh, gets better. Whatever happens, God has mercy on you and, and he allows that problem to be solved. But then what happens? People get two problems more three more problems, four more problems, and we constantly live in a cycle of wanting to solve our problems. And we never serve God. We never have time to do it. That's because we are still bound by our problems. But remember how Jesus said to the people, don't you see the birth of the air? They don't, they don't stock up their grain, yet God feeds them every day, even though they do nothing. See the lilies of the field, they're just grass that will be burnt down the next day. But God dresses them more wonderfully than all of the court of Solomon's put together. Now, you are more than birds and you're more than the grass. Ye of little faith. Don't you know who your father is? He takes care of everything. If you have that father, if that is the kind of God that is with you, then what should you do? Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. The point here is not that everything will be added onto you because you see his kingdom and righteousness far from it. The point here is who is the God whom you serve? Who is that God who is with you? He is the God of all the universe. He is the almighty God and he is restored. He has restored his relationship to you by the fact that Jesus on a cross has solved everything and he has resurrected to prove it. When you believe this, you become a child of God. So because that God is with you, nothing is a problem. So that now you can, you can stop worrying or focusing about the things in this earth. Of course, I'm not telling you to be irresponsible. Yes, we have to work. We have to do things that are um, that apply to this earth, of course. But that is not the purpose of our life. We were not born just to live out a life like everyone else. We were born to glorify God. We were born so that God's will may be done through us. So that is what we should focus on. So on one hand, everything is resolved, but on the other hand, we are now bound to his, to his will. We are people who must do the will of God. And that is why we were created. Man is truly happy when he lives according to the will of God. That is why so many Christians are conflicted because we don't live according to the will of God. Because in the first place, we do not clearly know what the will of God is. I mean, often this happens. But what is the will of God? And the lectures you might have seen, John chapter 6, verse 39 to 40, in which the Bible says that the will of God is that um, none of all that he has given to him shall be lost, and that he might raise them up at the last day. And also it says that everyone who sees the Son should believe in him, and he will raise them up at the last day. So the will of God is believing in the Son. Jesus, who is a Christ, as well as ensuring none of those who are prepared for him are lost. So the will of God pertains to believing the gospel and doing world evangelization. Um, in the lectures, it was discussed how this is the covenant of God and how we must live a life that is according to the covenant. We must follow the evangelism of the Bible, which is to share the gospel, not to convince people, not to fight with people, not to indoctrinate people. The gospel of the Bible must be shared as to find the people who are prepared by God. It's not our eloquence that will convince people. It's not our good way of doing things which will convince people. What will convince people or what will change the hearts of people in the end, it is the message of God. It's the gospel which will do it. So we must find those people who are ready, uh, prepared by God to receive this gospel. And maybe some of you might say, yeah, that's very good in theory, but is it actually like that? I assure you, it is like that. There are people prepared by God in the way that you would not expect. People who react to the message that Jesus is a Christ 
Maybe they don't know you. Maybe they haven't seen your life. But when they hear the gospel that Jesus is a Christ, their heart starts to burn. Just like the disciples who were going to the um, to Emmaus, those disciples who met Jesus and Jesus rebuked them, but also shared with them the gospel, their hearts started to burn. That really happens. There are people in India and in Bangladesh, everywhere you go, there are people who are ready for that. That's why we must, we must share the gospel. To what end? World evangelization must be fulfilled, not only so that souls are saved, not only so that we may be found as righteous workers in the eyes of the Lord, but because the Lord is giving an opportunity to everyone so that when they hear the gospel, they may have the opportunity to believe. And when everyone has had that chance to listen to the gospel, then the end will come. And I think the most important part of the end is the return of our Lord. Our Lord will return. That Lord whom we love so much, Jesus, whom we have dedicated our lives to, Jesus, who is the everything of our lives, he will return to us and we will be able to see him face to face. Is that not something glorious? Is that not why the church lives? So that we can please Jesus and that we can accelerate his return? So with this out of the way, with uh, let us go back to the passage that we began discussing, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and I'll try to be brief. So what am I trying to tell you with everything? I'm trying to tell you that this gospel is not lacking. It's not the gospel plus something else. That's what we usually think. The gospel in and of itself has all the answers within it. It's not that we should add something to the gospel. We ourselves should plunge into the gospel. We ourselves must become filled with the gospel. So Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, he says, Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor we dis- do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So Paul was saying here, okay, we have a ministry. Now God has allowed us to serve in this way in this earth. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That's something you see in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, right? God has allowed us to reconcile uh, mankind with God. Now, how do we do it? We know we're ambassadors of God. We know that we should take the gospel. We know that we should evangelize our regions. How do we do it? In what way should our lives be, uh, uh, how should I say it? In what way should our lives be useful to this, um, to, to this task? And furthermore, if I have lived such a different life from this, how can my life become more like, like the life that God wants? So Paul here says, we have this ministry and therefore we do not uh, lose heart, but rather we renounced to our shameful ways. We threw away everything that uh, become, became a, a disturbance or, or, or it became something that's not right for this work. Oftentimes people want to carry out both things. I want my life and I want the life of God. But I'm sorry, that's, not just, that's just not possible. If you choose to live for God, then you have died for yourself. You have denied yourself. Your past self has died with Christ and you have risen anew so that the Christ lives in you. That's what being born of Christ means. It means you have shed away all darkness. Of course, we're still in a process in which we discover many things in us that are not yet of the light, not yet of the gospel. But Paul says, he has reached the point in which he says, I've renounced all things. Um, He says, I do not use shameful ways, nor deception, nor do we distort the word of God. We put ourselves plainly. We set out the message plainly. So Paul is saying, I'm not trying to justify my actions. Rather, I let the gospel shape me. I let the word of God shape who who I should be. Oftentimes I hear that people say, oh, God will use you because he has made you this way. God will uh, use your personality. And I think in, in a certain sense, that is correct. But also, I think that there are many things in our lives that were not originally from the gospel, that were not originally something that God really desired. Things that were created when I still lived in darkness. 
to why am I trying to hold on to these? Paul himself was like that. Paul himself could have boasted about so many things. He could have said, oh, God used my time as a Jewish master, as, as a way to um, allow me to go deep into the scriptures, but then use that for the, uh, for the preaching of the gospel. But Paul did not do that. Paul said, I have everything as rubbish. Everything is, is not something I should hold on to. I could have boasted about so many things, but I do not hold on to these. Rather, I forsake these so that, it may, so that I may be found in Christ, not my own justice, but the justice of Christ. And I am amazed at how, how Paul, he could have held on to so much, but he says, Christ is better than that. Christ is better than my own thoughts. Christ is better than my own judgment, my own parameters. Christ is better than everything. So that's why I hold on to Christ. And here Paul is saying, I have forfeited, I have uh, discarded, thrown away everything that I have my shameful ways. I do not distort the word. Uh, no, I just share the gospel. And by sharing the gospel, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So Paul, although he was um, only focusing on the gospel, the gospel has an effect on him. And this effect is that he becomes more like the Christ. He becomes someone who's similar to the Christ. By renouncing everything, he becomes more similar to the Christ. And that is why he can put his conscience in front of God. Paul, he, he's not saying, oh, I have my life, but Jesus is a Christ, that's okay. He, he's not saying that. He's saying, because Jesus is a Christ, my life must change. Because Jesus is a Christ, everything I do must be for the gospel so that my conscience might be correct before God. So that's the point Paul has reached. And this is the point we must reach. The gospel is so deep. The gospel is so great that although the gospel is perfect in and of itself, we don't know the gospel yet. We cannot wrap our heads around the gospel yet. We're still learning about the gospel. And I encourage you to think this way. I encourage you to think that the gospel is so great that we will not finish learning about the gospel in our lifetime. lifetime. Rather, we must continue on forging ahead. We must continue on discovering the gospel because the gospel is a Christ himself, and Christ himself is eternal. How can we say we already know Christ? I've realized how arrogant that sounds in our lives. When before I used to say, oh, I already know Christ. How arrogant is that? Christ is the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. We think we already know him. We think we need something more than that Christ. Um, first, yes? Uh, uh, I'll, I'll continue. So, so often we, we think that, that we need something more than the Christ, or because we already know the Christ, then we need something else. Now I know the Christ, I need more discipline, I need more leadership, I need more this, more that. But actually, all that we need is found within the Christ. And when we're within the Christ, everything that we need um, is given to us by God. If we need to be more patient, that's in the Christ. If we need more wisdom, God will give us that wisdom in the Christ. If we need more of this, more of that, Christ is the answer. And when we do this, we can only humble ourselves. When we are before the Christ, we can only humble ourselves. And then we're presented before God in this way. But you know what Paul goes on? He says in verse three, and even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So Paul says, even if our lives have been given to Christ, and I think Paul was a model of, of the correct Christian faith. I, I see no major faults with Paul. But even if he lived a very good life in front of the Christ, he said, even then, the gospel is being veiled. Oftentimes, as Christians, we have fallen into the notion of, oh, when I live with God, then people will be able to see God with me, even if I don't have to speak with him. And yeah, I, I get why, that, why people think like that. However, 
Paul says, even if I have li lived a perfect life in Christ, even if I have striven to get to the point of Christ, even if people can see God in me, you know, that, you know what? Even then the gospel is being veiled. Even then Satan is attacking. Even then Satan wants people to believe that Christ is not the answer. And even in churches, this is happening. Paul was not writing this to Gentiles. He was writing this to the church of Corinth. This was a church, as you know very well, this was a church that had so many gifts of the Holy Spirit. This was a church that had the best teachers. It had a lot of resources. Evangelism was going on in this church. But it was one of the churches that was so, so evil in their hearts. So many brothers were fighting amongst themselves. So many people were trying to legally um, fight. There were abuses in the Lord's Supper. People were not waiting for each other. They were just caring about themselves. There was even one young man who said, who was boasting about having slept with his father's wife. Something that you cannot imagine in church that was going on in the Corinthian church. So Paul was not just saying, oh, you need to behave better. Oh, now you have the Christ, but now you need to, you need discipline. You need um, a spiritual vision. Paul was not saying that. Paul was saying Satan is trying to attack you so that Christ is not everything in your life. So that the glorious light of the gospel of Christ is being veiled. Satan is attacking one thing, even in churches. Even in churches, Satan is trying to say that the gospel is not in us, that you need something more, that you need to rely on something else. You need to rely on results. You need to rely on your own experience. You need to rely on this and that. The gospel is being veiled. What the church really needs is the gospel. And Satan will try to take that thought away from you. Satan will try to say, is it really the gospel? I think what people need is more discipline. What people need is more education. What people need is someone who loves them. Yes, they need that. Of course, we need to do all of that. I'm not saying they're bad. What I'm trying to say is, above all else, the gospel is what they truly need. Only the gospel can defeat Satan in their lives. Only the gospel can defeat sin in their lives. Only the gospel can allow them to come back to God. What is more necessary than that, I ask you? Are other things more necessary than coming back to God, than defeating sin in our, in our lives and, and Satan being defeated in our lives? Are, and is any other thing more necessary? I think not. If nothing else is more necessary, then why aren't we preaching the Christ? Why isn't our message about Jesus, who is the Christ? It's because we think other things are necessary. And Paul is acknowledging that the gospel is being attacked. That is why he says in verse five and six, for we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Paul says, we do not preach ourselves. We're not preaching to you about how good we are we're not preaching to you about oh we're doing missions and look at us you should be more like us paul is not saying that paul is not saying you must change your lifestyle that is not what paul is saying yes of course your lifestyle must match your faith that is true however that is not paul's message paul is saying the christ needs to be revealed to you you need the christ because you know what we are just your servants we are your servants for the sake of Christ. And verse six is very important, I think. For God who said, let light, light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Paul is saying our hearts were darkness. Our hearts were the same as every sinner. In fact, Paul in first Timothy, he says, I was the first of the sinners, the chief of, of the sinners. I was like everyone else. I was even worse than everyone else. But God allowed light to shine in the darkness that was my heart. That light is the Christ. Now, this is what man needs. Man needs light. 
Who is the light but the Christ? Only the Christ is the light. We know this. Christ is the light that has shined on all of humanity. He's shown on everyone. And his people did not accept him. That may be happening with us as well. So he says that he gave us a light of the knowledge of the glory of God. So because of this light, we can know the glory of God. We can know God himself through this light. But this light is found in the face of Christ. It's not in something else. It's in the Christ that you find the light. So brothers and sisters, um, coming to the conclusion of the message, um, I want to tell you that you have been greatly blessed. Not because of us, not because we're better. No, you have been greatly blessed because... God has allowed it to hear the gospel, the gospel that Jesus is a Christ. Words may differ a little bit, but what we're trying to say is God is giving you the opportunity of knowing the Christ more and more every day. Even if you're a pastor, even if you're a missionary, I myself as a missionary, I need the Christ every day. So God is giving us this opportunity and there's a great battle going on as missionaries, as pastors. But even if you're not a pastor or a missionary, even if you're a believer in church, there is a battle you must fight. You are chosen as an ambassador of Christ so that people may come back to God through the message of Jesus as a Christ, through the gospel. How are we going to do this? How are we going to continually keep on preaching the pure message that Jesus is a Christ? It's not by brainwashing ourselves. It's by going to him every day. In the end, how will we evangelize India? How will we evangelize Canada? How will we evangelize Bangladesh or whatever place you happen to be in? How will we evangelize it? There's only one way. We must be filled with the gospel. We must kneel down before the Christ. The Christ must be everything to us. As Paul was saying, we have this ministry and therefore we do not lose heart. We renounce to the shameful ways. We do not alter the word of God. We do not fit it to our convenience. We only preach the message plainly. And the plain message is Jesus is the Christ. And because we preach it, our lives have been changed as well by this message. But even then, Satan is trying to attack mankind. Satan is trying to distort the gospel. Satan is trying to make it so that the gospel does not seem the correct answer. That other things seem like the greatest answer. Let me ask you, there are many churches that have had money, good organization, a lot of theological knowledge. Their pastors are well-trained and they have good amount of devotion. They are going out to countries that you don't know about and they're giving their lives. I ask you, has that been enough to save that country? Has that been enough to save your country? Even you may ask this for yourselves. You have been good. I know that all of you pray. I know that all of you read the Bible. I know that all of you have a devoted life to God. Has that been enough? Has that saved your country? Is that saving the region you're in? If prayer and a good life has allowed you to save your country, then that's good. But if it has not, then you should come to wonder what's wrong. What's wrong is that we have lost focus on the true message. The Christ, Satan, is trying to make it so that we're veiled and that the Christ does not shine upon us. That is why Paul says, we do not preach ourselves. We do not preach about our methods, our practices, the way you should be, your lifestyle, that, that, that's not the message of Paul. Of course, I repeat, yes, your lifestyle should match your faith, definitely. However, speaking about lifestyle will not save you. Giving out your good testimony, it's very good, but that will not save anyone. What will truly save people is Christ. Jesus is that Christ. So that is why Paul concludes by saying God has allowed light to shine from our hearts. Our hearts were like darkness, but he has allowed light to shine. And that light is the knowledge of the glory of God. God has allowed us to meet him, to be with him, to be our, his ambassadors, his children. But all of that is found in the face of Christ. So brothers and sisters, there is a lot to do. There's a great task ahead. People must be saved. People today are suffering. They need a message. They need to truly 
come back to God. And the only way they will come back to God is through the Christ. Uh, I want to clarify, I'm not trying to say you must not pray. I'm not saying that. Of course, we must pray. We must read the Bible. There are different things that we must do. Of course, we must do them. However, when it comes to what's truly important, we may have lost track of it. We may do all these things and still not believe that Jesus is Christ. So I urge you and I encourage you that every day our hearts may be turned toward the Christ, that our souls, our spirits, our everything, all of our beings may be set toward the Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you because you have allowed us to share the message uh, today. You have allowed us to meditate upon 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Lord, we know that we are lacking in so many ways. Yet, you have given us the privilege of using us to save our regions, our countries, by the only message that you have given us has the standard of salvation. Only the Christ saves. Only the Christ can reconcile us to God. And only Jesus is a Christ. Lord, allow our hearts to come back to this message every day. That, Lord, our judgment, our experience, our results may not hinder us, may not become a stumbling block for us to go back into this message. Lord, Help us with your Holy Spirit to be guided into Christ. Help us with your Holy Spirit to go out and sow the seed, to share to everyone that Jesus is the Christ. Allow the worthy ones, the good soil, to arise from this. But Lord, help us. Help us that all of India, all of Bangladesh, all of Pakistan, all of Canada, all of the countries, Lord, may truly have the testimony that Jesus is Christ. Allow us not to remain in theory only. Allow us not to just speak and not do anything as often we have done. Allow us to truly live out the faith that Jesus is a Christ while believing that Jesus is a Christ. We thank you. In the name of our Lord, Jesus, the Christ, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Wonderful message. Thanks, God. Hallelujah. Kodam ki tarif ko. Praise the Lord. Is khubso message ke liye. Aur ab ham jitne bhi humare urdu bolne aur samajne wale hain, unke liye main isko thoda sa bayan kar do. Brother ne bahut zabardast message diya, bahut khubsoorti si unhone baat ki hai. To ham isko thoda sa main ye jo unhone hawala pada hai, dusra kanti ho, uske char baab uski pehli jo unhone chhe ayat padi hai, main inko padna chahti ho urdu mein. پس جب ہم پر ایسا رحم ہوا کہ ہمیں یہ خدمت ملی تو ہم ہمت نہیں ہارتے بلکہ ہم نے شرم کی پوشیدہ باتوں کو ترک کر دیا اور مکاری کی چال نہیں چلتے نہ خدا کے کلام میں آمیزش کرتے ہیں بلکہ حق ظاہر کر کے خدا کے روبرو ہر ایک آدمی کے دل میں اپنی نیکی بٹھاتے ہیں اور اگر ہماری خوشخبری پر پردہ پڑا ہے تو ہلاک ہونے والوں ہی کے واسطے پڑا ہے یعنی ان بے ایمانوں کے واسطے جن کی عقلوں کو اس جہان کے خدا نے اندھا کر دیا ہے تاکہ مسیح جو خدا کی صورت ہے اس کے جلال کی خوشخبری ان پر نہ پڑے کیونکہ ہم اپنی نہیں بلکہ مسیح یسو کی منادی کرتے ہیں کہ وہ خداوند ہے اور اپنے حق میں یہ کہتے ہیں کہ یسو کی خاطر تمہارے غلام ہیں اس لیے کہ خدا ہی ہے جس نے فرمایا کہ تاریکی میں سے نور چمکے اور وہی ہمارے دلوں میں چمکا تاکہ خدا کے جلال کے پہچان کا نور یسو مسیح کے چہرے سے جلوہ گر ہو آمین تو میرے عزیز بھائیوں جتنے بھی ہم پارٹیسپینٹس اور جتنے بھی ہمارے ویورز جو ہمیں یوٹیوب پر دیکھتے ہیں ان کے لیے یہ سب آج کا جو میسیج ہے ان تمام لوگوں کے لیے ہے جو خدمت کے کام میں ہیں جو خدمت کرتے ہیں جن کے ایک سپرد خدمت کی گئی ہے کہ وہ انجیل کی منادی کریں خوش خبری کی منادی جو ہے وہ کریں اور جو ٹرو گاسپل ہے اس کو وہ دنیا تک لے کر جائیں فالوس سور جو ہے وہ اس ٹرو گاسپل کو وہ اس نے بڑی اچھی طرح سے اس نے انڈرسٹینڈ کیا تھا اور اس کا وہ مکاشرہ بہت ہی گہرائی سے اپنے اندر رکھتا تھا اسی لیے وہ جو ہے اس کو بڑے ہی اچھے طریقے سے بیان کرتا ہے اور وہ یہ بات کرتا ہے کہ میں آپ زندہ نہ رہا بلکہ مسیح مجھ میں زندہ ہے تو وہ یہاں پر بھی یہ بات کرتا ہے کہتا ہے کہ ہم نے شرم کی پوشیدہ باتوں کو ترک کر دیا مطلب کہ جو ہمارے اندر کے ہڈن جو سین ہوتے ہیں نواز اوقات میں پوشیدہ باتیں وہ ہوتی ہیں جو ہم مطلب ہم سمجھتے نہیں ہیں کہ یہ گناہ ہیں لیکن ہم وہ کر رہے ہوتے ہیں 
تو اس لیے وہ پوشیدہ باتیں جو ہمارے اندر ہوتی ہیں جو جن کو ہم گنا سمجھ کر جو ہے کرتے گنا نہیں سمجھتے اور ہم کر رہے ہوتے ہیں لیکن وہ گنا ہوتے ہیں وہ کہتا ہے لیکن ہم نے اپنے آپ کو خالی کر دیا مکاری کو ہم نے خالی کر دیا اور وہ ساری باتیں جو ہمارے اندر ہیں جو گنا ہیں جو خدا کو ناپسند ہیں ہم نے ان سے اپنے آپ کو خالی کر کے اپنے اندر ہم نے مسیح کو بھر لیا ہے اور مسیح کی اس خوشخبری کو ہم نے اپنے اندر لیا ہے اور اس کو ہم دنیا بار جو ہے وہ واضح کرتے ہیں اور ہم یہ سب جانتے ہیں کہ بے شک دنیا میں بہت سارے مذاہب ہیں لیکن دنیا ابھی بھی زندہ خدا کے بارے میں نہیں جانتی دنیا ابھی بھی خدا یشو مسیح کے بارے میں نہیں جانتی کہ زندہ خدا کون ہے ابھی بھی ان کی عقلوں پر پردہ پڑا ہوا ہے اور یہ کس وجہ سے کہ ابلیس نے ان کی عقلوں پر پردہ ڈالا ہوا ہے اور جیسے کہ بھائی نے بتایا کہ ہمارے بہت سارے ڈینومینیشن بہت سارے چرچز میں بہت سارے جو ہیں یہ انجیل کی منادی کی جاتی ہے خوشخبری کی منادی کی جاتی ہے لیکن افسوس کے ساتھ کہ ابھی بھی بہت سارے چرچز میں جو ہے انجیل کی وہ منادی جو جس طرح سے ہونی چاہیے جس طرح سے جو بائبل جس روح سے ہمیں سکھاتی ہے اس روح سے نہیں ہوتی یا اس کو انہوں نے بگاڑ دیا ہے ہر ایک نے اپنے اپنے طریقے سے اس کو لیا ہے شاید وہ ابھی اس بات کو سمجھے نہیں لیکن جب ہمارے یہ جتنے بھی لیکچرز تھے اس میں ہم نے یہ بات واضح کرنے کی کوشش کی ہے کہ خوشخبری تو ایک سمپل سی بات ہے اور سمپل بات یہ ہے ایک ایمان لانا کہ خدا یشو مسیح جو ہے وہ مسیحا ہے خدا یشو مسیح ہی کرائسٹ ہے اس پر ایمان لانا یہی ہمارا ایمان ہے یہی خوشخبری ہے جسے ہم میں دوسروں کو دینا ہے اور ہم نے ان میں سب میں یہ بھی سیکھا کہ یہ کوئی اتنا کمپلیکیٹڈ بات نہیں ہے یہ کوئی اتنی بات نہیں کہ ہمیں بہت زیادہ دوسروں کے ساتھ بحث کرنی پڑے دوسروں کو ہمیں گھنٹوں ان کے ساتھ بحث کرنی پڑے جیسے کہ ہم نے پچھلے بھی میسج میں دیکھا تھا سنا تھا اور آپ بھی آج بھی بردر نے یہ بات کی ہے کہ یہ تو سمپل سی بات ہے کہ ہم اس میسج کو دوسروں تک پہنچائیں دوسروں کو کہیں سمپلی ہم یہ بات کریں کہ جیز از دا کرائسٹ تو خدا ہم یشو مسیح وہ راستہ ہے جو وہی راہ ہے وہی حق ہے وہ زندگی ہے وہی جو ہے وہ صرف ہمارے ہماری خاطر جو اسی نے اپنی قربانی دی اسی نے ہماری خاطر جو ہے وہ اپنی جان قربان کی سلیپ اٹھائی اور اسی کے پاک لہو سے ہم جو ہے وہ بچائے جاتے ہیں ہم صرف یہ لوگوں کو بتائیں اور دوسری بات یہ ہے کہ جن کو خدا نے پہلے سے تیار کیا ہوا ہے جب ہم کلام اپنا کلام کا بیج جب ہم بکھیرتے ہیں تو جو زمین خدا کے پاکروں نے تیار پہلے سے کی ہوئی ہے جو دل خدا کی طرف سے تیار ہیں وہ اس کلام کو کیش کرتے ہیں وہ اس اس خوشخبری کو اپنے اندر سموتے ہیں وہ اس خوشخبری کو اپنے اندر لیتے ہیں اور پھر خدا ان کو اپنے جلال کے لیے استعمال کرتا ہے یعنی خدا کا کلام جو ہے وہ اثر رکھتا ہے ہمیں جو ہے وہ ایک سمپلی دوسروں کو پیغام دینا ہے کہ جیز از دا کرائسٹ کہ خدا یشو مسیح کون ہے لیکن بہت سارے آج کلیسیوں میں یہ کام نہیں ہو رہا وہ کچھ اور ہی مطلب جو ہے وہ کر رہے ہیں لیکن جو بائبل کا مین جو ہے وہ یہی ہے کہ نجات کا جو پیغام ہے وہ سب تک پہنچے وہ سب لوگوں تک پہنچے وہ ساری دنیا تک پہنچے اور دوسری بات وہ پولو سوسل یہاں پر کہتا ہے کہ کیونکہ ہم نے نہیں بلکہ مسی ہم اپنی نہیں بلکہ مسیح یسو کی منادی کرتے ہیں جب ہم مسیح یسو کی منادی کرتے ہیں تو مسیح یسو ہی ہمارا جو ہے وہ مین جو ہے فوکس ہونا چاہیے خوشخبری سب سے بنیادی چیز خوشخبری ہے اور خوشخبری کیا ہے وہ ہم نے اس بات کی ہے اپنے پورے لیکچرز میں بھی ہم نے اسی پہ بات کی ہے کہ ٹرو گوسپل کیا ہے اور ہم مطلب ہمیں جتنے بھی ہم منسٹرس ہیں جتنے بھی امبیسڈر ہیں جن کو بھی خدا نے چنا ہے اپنی خدمت کے لیے ہم اب اس کے غلام ہیں اب ہم اس کے سرونٹس ہیں تو ہم اپنے آپ کو خالی کرتے ہیں ابھی بھی ہم بہت کمزور ہیں بہت ساری باتوں میں کمزور ہیں لیکن وہ ہماری تربیت کرتا ہے وہ ہمیں سکھاتا ہے وہ پھر ہمیں آگے بڑھاتا ہے تو میرے بہنوں اور بھائیوں جو ہمیں ہمارے ساتھ اس میں ہیں ہمیں یہ بات جو ہے آج اس بات کا اقرار کرنا ہے کہ ہمیں اپنے آپ کو خالی کرنا ہے اور اپنی سمت کو جو اپنی خدمت کی سمت ہے اس کو ہم نے سیدھا کرنا ہے تاکہ جو ہے ہم اس کی طرف بڑھیں اور اس اسی نشان کی طرف بڑھتے ہوئے ہم اپنی نجات کو بھی حاصل کریں اور اس کو قائم بھی رکھیں اور دوسروں کو بھی ہم اس کی طرف لا سکیں خدا مد آپ سب کو برکت دے آمین تھینک یو بردر تھینک یو ونڈرفل سسٹر جی بردر آپ کچھ کہنا چاہتے ہیں اف یو وانٹ ٹو سے سم تھنگ یو کین سے نو یو کین کیری تھینک یو فار بیوٹیفل میسج یو ہیو یو کین کیری 
No, uh, I have done, and now uh, we have all participants, and we can invite them. Uh, they can uh, say something they want to say. Our side, brother Joseph. We have brother Joseph. Brother Joseph. Okay. Okay, madam. Brother, please, say, uh, 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 please say something if you want to say something and please introduce yourself. Prayer. Parshudra, the Eagle and Sunday next to the Alitelis Tuna. The Rathra and the Provamiro, the Dasun, the Mugar, the Elevator with Martra and Navitaran, but next to the Prova, Satya Suvartan Prova. And in Staniki and a Pakistan Sahodri, Nasri, and a Sri Matapurku, Pradistuna, the one absolutely Sunday, Alagana Prova, Satisuartanane, Prantalo, and a Marviati Chandanatlu, Mirlutana Karial Chain, Navakimlo, Nirkati Palamudation, David, the Vanimaganata Stuti Stotro, Chalist, Esun Amulo, Ashir within Chipradistun Namut and Rain. Amen. 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 We can say uh, Amen. Uh, amen. Saath hai, brother Rashid hai saath. Thank you, brother. Brother Rashid. Hello, Gigi. Gigi, brother, aap kya kena chahenge? Thode se short, short time mein aap uh, बिल्कुल uh, मैं ये कहना चाहूँगा कि बहुत अच्छा नहीं आज है वो खुदा के कलाम को बयान किया क्योंकि खुदा का कलाम अज़ल से लेके अब तक है ही अच्छा लेकिन एक बात जो इन्होंने बयान की वो ये कि आज चर्चिस में जो है कि वो तलीम नहीं दी जा रही जो कलामी मुकद्दस के मुताबिक होने चाहिए सो ज़रूरत इस बात की है कि हमें जो है वो कलाम मुकद्दस को फॉलो करना है और अंजील की मुनादी करनी है और खुदावंद यीशुल मसीह ने भी कहा कि सारी खलक के सामने जाओ और अंजील की मुनादी करो और जब हम मत्ती के जिलिस का 28वां बाब और उसकी 19वें अध्याय का सब पढ़ते हैं तो वहां पर भी लिखा कि पास तुम जाओ और सब कौमों को शिगिर्द बनाओ और उन्हें खुदा बाप बेटा और के नाम से बपतिस्मा तो आमीन 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 और वी हैव ब्रदर सानिया पलका या प्रेस लो सिस्टर praise the lord and uh, actually today there was good message by brother so may god bless him also and here uh, i can say that uh, absolutely as uh, when we see all around this world today there are many who are doing evangelical work and uh, the pastoring work and the teacher and uh, so and so in the name of christ jesus so among them also there are some but uh, who can do as a truly the gospel work but uh, some are there who used to do for the money purpose also and for the namesake also i can say that so here i come to know actually we should know that whatever situation and uh, whatever uh, circumstance it may be or whoever it may be in front of us so we should hold that true gospel and we should speak about the Jesus Christ, who is the living God, and who was, and who is, and who will be. So, about the things we should preach today in this world. That's what uh, uh, I hope and uh, I believe. And also from this uh, message also, I learned as uh, we are the disciple and uh, we are the ambassador for the Christ, we should do these things. So, may God bless him. And also, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, thank you, brother. हमारे साथ हैं इश्फाक हैं इन्होंने हमें first time join किया है अगर ये कुछ कहना चाहते हैं इश्फाक okay sister Nusrat. Hello. Ishfaq. Yes, Ishfaq. 
ब्रदर इशफाक आप वहां पे आप यहाँ पे हैं हेलो हेलो हाँ जी मसीसु के नाम में पासर इशफाक की जानब सबों को सलाम और मेरा तलक जो है वो पाकिस्तान पेशावर से है और खुदावंद की शुक्र गुजारी आज के लिए और खुदावंद के मोतबर कलाम के लिए और हम इस बात का यकीन करते हैं कि खुदावंद का जो जिंदगी बख्श कलाम है वो हर शुभ तरोताज़ा है और मैंने गौर से एंडिंग की लाइनें सुनी हैं और बड़ा अच्छा उन्होंने प्रीच किया है लेकिन मैं बहुत देर से कनेक्ट हुआ हूँ तो मैं ज़्यादा उन उस पास की स्पीच को सही तौर पर सुन नहीं पाया खुदावंद आज के कलाम के सिला से सबों को बरकत दे और मैं अपनी जिंदगी पे गौर वोस करना चाहिए और कलाम के पैमाने में अपने आप को परखना चाहिए और जो हमारे अंदर कमी कमजोरियां हैं कलाम की रोशनी में हमें अपनी कमी कमजोरियों का खुदा के हजूर इकरार करना चाहिए सो मे गॉड ब्लेस टू ऑल ऑफ यू ओके थैंक यू ब्रदर वेलकम उम्मीद करते हैं कि आप हमें इसी तरह से ज्वाइन करते रहेंगे लेकिन मेरी सब पार्टिसिपेंट से एक रिक्वेस्ट है कि प्लीज जब भी आप ज्वाइन करते हैं मीटिंग के दौरान में तो प्लीज आपने अपने माइक अनम्यूट ना किया करें उसको म्यूट ही रहने दिया करें क्योंकि वो फिर डिस्टर्बेंस सी हो जाती है तो जब आपका टाइम हो तो फिर आप अपना माइक जो है वो अनम्यूट कर सकते हैं ये मेरी आपसे हम्बल रिक्वेस्ट है और मैं तमाम पार्टिसिपेंट से कहूंगी कि वो हमें जरूर ज्वाइन करते रहें इसी तरह से हमारे साथ जुड़े रहें ताकि हम खुदावंद के इस खिदमत में हम सब मिलकर जो है वो आगे बढ़ सकें अब मैं सिस्टर नुस्तों से कहूंगी कि वो अपना फीडबैक दें लेकिन शॉर्ट टाइम में शॉर्ट चंद बातों में बयान करें ओके थैंक यू सिस्टर Uh, so the message was very um touching was very um uh, full of the spirit the what i received it from message today because the peoples are actually uh, preaching the non biblical um doctrines today so the the true doctrine is the like uh, we have to follow the jesus and we have to set our eyes on to him and to uh, preach the biblically uh, doctrines today and um to do that you know we know that the jesus christ uh, was uh, onto the earth being messiah being christ so this is the this is the true gospel that we have to bring the jesus to the world and preach the jesus to the world and bring them to because the purpose is jesus coming here to reconcile the mankind to the father and uh, to bring us back into the same image we were created so today we have to set our eyes on to jesus and we have to uh, put uh, put our uh, hopes on to jesus and we have to look at to him so what his divine words was he was talking to us and you know what was the reason you know because he wants us all to be a, in a glory body to carry the glory that way he was carry the glory onto the earth because the kingdom of heaven will not we will not reach the kingdom of heaven unless we know the jesus christ and the preach the jesus christ to the world and know ourselves that because he said i came to serve not to be served so today as a disciple as the ambassador we have to be the servant of the lord onto the earth and put our eyes and set our eyes onto the jesus and very deeply look into him go into the depth what he preached and what he wants us to preach to the world so this is all i wanted to say god bless you all my brothers and sisters overall the message was good we got the message that we have to bring the jesus to the world and preach the jesus to the world that is all god bless you all Thank you sister
थैंक यू फॉर दिस फीडबैक और अब हमारे साथ जो हैं ब्रदर इशफाक जो पिशावर से हैं मैं उनसे रिक्वेस्ट करूंगी कि वो दुआ आखिरी दुआ में हमारी रहनमाई करें इस सारी मीटिंग के लिए और सारे पार्टिसिपेंट्स के लिए और और मजीद के खुदा हमारे साथ अच्छे और ऐसे खादिम खुदा हमारे साथ जोड़े जो वाकई जो है वो ये बिलीव रखते हैं कि जीजस जैसा क्राइस्ट और इसी की वो प्रीचिंग करते हैं कोई दूसरी मतलब डॉक्टरिन उन उसकी प्रीचिंग नहीं करते यानी सनसियर लोग जो खुदा चाहता है कि वो हमारे साथ मिले तो हमारा ताकि ये जो ग्रो है वो बढ़ता जाए और हम जो है इस मेजलाइजेशन के काम को हम अच्छे तरीके से कर सके जैसे खुदा हमसे चाहता है नहायत ही मुआजम और मुकरम खुदा तो जो अपनी जातों से वाहिद यकता और मुफरद खुदा है तेरी मानंद कोई खुदा नहीं है और तू जैसा कोई खुदा नहीं है तो वो आफ्ताब सदाकत है जिसका तलू तो है लेकिन गरूब नहीं क्योंकि आपके बेटे यसु मसीह की लहू के वसीला से हमारी तकदीस और हमारी जदीद होती है और खुदावंद आज के सारे दिन के लिए आपके हजूर बरकत को चाहते हैं और खुदावंद कादर मुतलिक खुदा आपका शुक्र अदा करते हैं खुदाए मोहब्बत खुदाए कदूस खुदाए सालूस आपकी शुक्र गुजारी करते हैं हमें खुदावंद कादर मुतलिक खुदा आप अपने कलाम के मुताबिक खुदावंद हमें जिंदगी गुजारने का खुदावंद फजल दीजिए और वाकई ही खुदावंद आप ऐसे लोग ढूंढते हैं अपनी प्रस्तिश के लिए अपनी पूजा के लिए अपनी बंदगी के लिए जो खुदाम रूह और सच्चाई से आपकी प्रस्तिश करते हैं और खुदामंद वो ऐसी तालीमत वो ऐसे बुख्तान जो कि खुदामंद हमारी अकीदे को ठेस पहुंचाते हैं और वो लोग जो हिडनली खुदामंद आपके कलाम की ऐलानिया तस्लील करते हैं नई नई डॉक्टर को खुदामंद उन अकायद को खुदामंद उनकी तालीमत को खुदामंद वो रखते हुए सो खुदामंद ऐसी खुदामंद गलत लोगों से खुदामंद अपने लोगों को बचाइए और खुदामंद वो लोग जो गलत अकायद की तालीम हासिल कर रहे हैं खुदावंद उनको भी खुदावंद अपने कलाम की रोशनी से खुदावंद रोशनास कीजिए खुदावंद ताकि वो लायक तौर से खुदावंद तेरे कलाम को समझे क्योंकि तेरे कलाम में भी खुदावंद लिखा है कि और किताब मुकदस के मुताबिक उनके जहन को खोला ताकि वो किताब मुकदस को समझ सकें आपका खुदावंद हम यकीन रखते हैं कि जब तक आप हमारे जहन को हमारी बातन की आंखों को खुदामद ना खोलें तब तक हम इन अलाही भेतों को इन मुकाशफात को खुदामंद नहीं समझ सकते खुदामंद आज की सारी मीटिंग के लिए खुदावंद और ये बहन जो खुदामंद आपकी खुदावंद खिदमत कर रही है और मीटिंग को होश कर रही है खुदामंद इन्हें और ज्यादा गहरे में ले जा लफ्जों की तरतीब दे खुदावंद स्पीकिंग की खुदावंद बरकत दे खुदावन और खुदावंद आज के जिंदगी बख्श कलाम की भी शुक्र गुजारी करते हैं जिन्होंने खुदावंद आपके कलाम की गर्दान की है आपके सुखन को बयान किया है खुदावंद और ज्यादा गनेरी बरकत दे और खुदामंद हमें एक दूसरे के साथ खुदामंद जुड़े रहने का खुदामंद गहरा फजल बख्शिए खुदामंद ताकि खुदामंद हम इस ग्रेट कमीशन को खुदामंद पाया तकमील तक खुदामंद लेके जाए बड़ी सच्चाई के साथ वफादारी के साथ खुदामंद क्योंकि यसु मसीह आपने आज खुद अपने लोगों को बताया है और सिखाया है इस बात की तालीम दी है कि तुम्हारी कमरे बंदी रहे और तुम्हारे चिराग जलते रहे सो खुदामंद हमें अपने हजूर में खुदा मोहतात रहने की खुदा बरकत दे और हम खुदाउंद बड़ी वफादारी के साथ सच्चाई के साथ खुदाउंद तेरे साथ चलने वाले बने आज की सारी बातों के लिए खुदाउंद आपका शुक्र अदा करते हैं ये सब कुछ मांगते हैं यसु मसीह के जलील उल कदर राम में आमीन 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 अब हम खुदा उनकी सिखाई हुई दुआ में शरीक होंगे हमारे बाप 
تو جو آسمان پر ہے تیرا نام پاک مانا جائے میری بات شہی آئے تیری مرضی جیسے آسمان پر پوری ہوتی ہے زمین پر بھی ہو ہمارے روز کی روٹی آج ہمیں دے جس ہم اپنے کرسناروں کو معاف کرتے ہیں تو بھی ہمارے کرسناروں میں معاف کر اور میں ازمائش نہ پڑھنے دے بلکہ میں برائش سے بچہ ان کے بعد شہد قدرت و جلال ہمیشہ سے کری ہیں آمین آپ کو برادر رشید ہمارے ساتھ ہیں وہ کلام برکات ادا کریں گے اب ہمارے خداون یسو مسیح کا فضل خدا باپ کی محبت اور رول قدس کی رفاقت اور شراکت اب سے لے کے ہمیشہ تک تمام ایمانداروں کے ساتھ کمبنی اسرائیل کے ساتھ شہر یروشلم کے ساتھ اور کل ایمانداروں کے ساتھ عبدل ابا تک ہوتی رہے عبادت ہو چکی خداون کی سلامتی آپ سبوں پر قائم اور دائم رہے خدا باپ خدا بیٹا اور خدا رول قدس کے نام سے آمین 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 آمین